Okay, in this tutorial, we will create a micro scratch effect. For this, we first have to create a circular scratch pattern that then only appears in the very strong highlights. This effect often appears in car paint or other polished surfaces, so it will help you to increase the realism for these kind of materials. So let's first check out what kind of effect we actually try to replicate. And this effect oftentimes appears in car paints, for example, where we have like a very smooth surface, which is coated. So we have a clear coat layer on top. We can see we have these very crisp reflections here of, in this case, the building here or those power lines. So everything is very crisp. But in the highlight parts, we can see that there are some tiny micro scratches that are basically in the clear coat layer itself. So those are very fine micro scratches that only appear if we have a very strong light source hitting it. And then we have this kind of circular pattern that appears around our highlight parts here. And we also can get these kind of swirly effect here through the highlight itself, these kind of lines that go through it. So I try to replicate something similar here in this tutorial where we have a very strong light source here, or a very strong highlight. And then we have a circular scratch pattern that appears around it and it's kind of fading off away from the highlight. And then also in parts where we don't have some very strong highlights, we get the very crisp and smooth reflections, the same way like in here. And then we also get this kind of swirly pattern that goes here through our light source or through our highlights here. So we try to replicate something like this in this tutorial. Now let's jump to 3ds Max and see how we can start to do that. So the picture you seen just now also had some car paint flakes involved. We're not going to cover this in this tutorial. There's our own dedicated tutorial on my channel that you can find in there. So here we're only going to cover like the base layer and more importantly, the coating layer. So I set up a V-Ray blend material already. And at the moment, I just applied this base shader in here, which is just this very simple V-Ray material. At the moment, it just has a fall off here in the diffuse a glossiness of 0.6 so that we don't get some very crisp highlights. Those crisp highlights we're going to add in the clear coat layer. And then I have an IOR of 1.3 to just make it appear like a matte base layer. And now we're just going to add our clear coat layer on top of that. And then we're going to scratch this clear coat layer to make those scratches only appear in the highlights. So for this, let's first put the blend amount here all the way to white so that we don't need to deal with two shaders at the same time. We're gonna blend it correctly later. And let's add a new V-Ray blend material in here. Also name it properly. And as soon as for the base layer, we add a new V-Ray material and then also name this one here. Then we can start to set the diffuse color here all the way to black and the reflection all the way to white and then also disable Fresnel reflections. And now we have a shader that gets 100% of environment reflections. So now in order to make it look a little bit more realistic, because if we can zoom in, for example, we see we have these like super perfect reflections that are happening everywhere and that in reality actually never really happens. There's always a little bit of surface imperfection. So we need to, for example, add like a bump map in here and let's just add like a noise and you can see as soon as we add this, it already distorts here our geometry a little bit or our reflections. And then let's choose, for example, a size of five and choose fractal. And you can see it distorts it even more. And we can choose like 10 different levels of fractal detail. Now we have these very small distortions here happening all over the place. And of course, at the moment, it's way too strong. So we need to dial back this bump amount here by a lot. So for example, if I put an amount of one, and we can see we have all of those more interesting distortions here that are happening in our clear coat layer. So I think that's for now fine. And now we can deal with the next layers in here. But first, let me switch to a slightly different camera that we can see here our highlight part more detailed. And then we can first set this blend amount here all the way to white temporarily that we only focus what's happening here in this shader. We just copy the one that we created before. We copy this, use it as a base make some small modifications to it. First of all, by removing the bump here and then setting back this bump value here all the way back to 100. And then we will add a V-Ray normal map. And then in this V-Ray normal map, we will add a V-Ray bitmap. And then inside this V-Ray bitmap, we will just load a normal map. And now we have a normal map that's basically applied here to our model. But now the size of course is way too big. So in here, the tiling I can increase that to four by four in my case, and I get something that looks a little bit better. But I notice one thing that is odd and that's the highlights here. So I have way longer highlights here than I have on this axis. And actually I'm looking for like this kind of circular highlight. So there's an indication that something is wrong with a normal map. And in my situation, that's the easy fix. I just need to flip here this green channel. Once I do this, then the normal map is loaded correctly. 
In your case, you might not need to do it. It depends on a normal map that you're using. But in my case, I have to flip here the screen channel and then I get these kind of circular highlights in here. And now there's just one last thing that we need to do. So if we go back to the original camera, we notice that somehow once we're further away, we don't really see any of those scratches anymore. And that's because this filter multiplier here, the default value is set to one. In most cases, that's also fine. But in this case, because we really want to show this kind of effect, I decrease the filter multiplier all the way to zero. This way it will render much longer, but it won't filter away like these kind of scratches that we just added because that's exactly the effect that we want to show. So if I go back to one again, then all of this stuff would basically disappear. So in this case, a value of 0.01 is the right value for me here. And then once we go closer to here, we can check how this one looks like here. I said in the more close details, it looks almost the same, but once we're further away, it wouldn't be filtered away. So now let's rename this part here and then also this part here that it looks a little bit more clean. And now the idea is to layer multiple parts of this shader or multiple instances of this shader on top of each other. But for this, there's one thing that's important to understand is how this bump value here basically behaves. So at the moment, the bump value is set all the way to 100. But if I go lower with the bump value, you will see that this highlight here, the width of this highlight becomes smaller. So if I go to 25, it becomes even smaller. If I go to five, it's barely visible, right? So that's how this bump value basically behaves. So the higher it goes, the more wide this highlight will become. The lower it is, the more narrow it will become. Now we will layer multiple inserts of this shader on top of each other, all with slightly different bump values. And the plan is to have like a nice transition that we have stronger scratches here near our original reflection highlight. And then it kind of trails off or fades out until it totally disappears. So I plan to add like four different instances here of these shaders in this blend material in here. And let's prepare this a little bit. So first of all, let's rename this shader here. So this one would be our scratch one shader. And then I will put the blend amount here all the way to black. That means it's not visible at all. And then inside here, I will add a V-Ray color and let's call this one here white. And then let's put the color here all the way to white and then with this value here, we can basically dial in the intensity of the shader. So if this one here is set to 100, then we will 100% show what's in here. And if it's set to zero, then we will show 100% this black value here. And that means basically zero. So if I put in 50, then I have an intensity of this shader of 50. If I put 10, I have an intensity of the shader of 10 and so on. Let's leave it at 100 for now. And then we will just put four different instances here. So all of those here will be white. This one I can remove. And then I will put all the way here black. And now we'll just instance this shader in here and then create three more copies of it and rename them accordingly. And then I go back to my original shader in here and I will copy the normal map and I will instance it in all of those shaders in here. And I will also adjust the bump value. So this one has a bump value of 100. This one will have a value of 40, this one of 20, and then this one of 10. And then we can go back to our land material and then instance all of those shaders that we just created, instance them in here. And now at the moment, they're all set to 100%. So we only see this layer right here. Let's put them all to zero. And then let's try to find some nice values to kind of start to have a fade out so that we have a lot of scratches or more bright scratches here. And then towards the outer part here, they kind of trail off. So let's start with this layer here that has the broadest highlight. And let's just put in like a small intensity of one, for example. And then this shader here, we could put an intensity of two and then maybe here something like five and 10. And then we should have yeah, some very small highlights here, quite far away. And then the more closer we get, the more stronger the highlights will become. That's the idea behind these fading out scratches here around the highlights. And now there was one more thing that we had to do was like these kind of swirly effects that you saw in the beginning. So we have these kind of streaks that go through. This we're gonna go through each shader again and change something in there. So let me just remove all of this here and then put this one here all the way back to 100 again. And then we will add some 
little bit of glossiness in here, so a value of 0.9, so that we get some specular highlights. And then we will choose here uh, anisotrophy of 0.75. And then we will get these kind of highlight streaks here. So inside here, we can, let me change the camera. For example, we choose the original camera in here so we can see these kind of highlights. We get these kind of streaks now here. And now we can also rotate those highlights here. So for example, we can rotate it like 45 degrees. We can change the local axis. So there's different axes in here. And now the idea is that we go through each of those different shaders in here, all give them a glossiness of 0.9, and then all give them an anisotrophy value of 0.75, and then change the rotation value for each of them a little bit. And then also change in some of those shaders this local axis. So let's do that. And then once we're back here in our viewer blend material, we just dial in the same numbers like what we had before. So one, two, five, and 10. And then because all of them have like slightly different anisotrophy, you will get these kind of swirly streaks here that appear now here in our highlights. So now we're finished with the clear coat. And the only thing that's now left to do is to just blend it together here with this base material. So the only thing that I need to do is to add like a fall off map in here and then change the fall off type to Fresnel, for example. And if I want to have my clear coat layer show a little bit stronger, for example, choose a value here of two, and then both will be blended together. But we will notice now if I just go back to the close up view that because we're using this fall off type now, this kind of scratch effect is very small or very subtle. And we then need to go inside here and adjust those values here in order to make them appear correctly with our blend material together. So to make it more obvious, I just chose here all of those values to be set to 10. And then if we let this render for a while, we will see that we will get like a broader scratch highlight that looks more nice with this base material blended together. And now let's just choose another camera view here, which is a little bit further away that we can see the final effect of everything. And now once the rendering is finished, we will see that we get exactly the kind of effect that we wanted. We have like these kind of swirly highlights here through our main highlight. And then we also have these kind of scratches that appear around the very bright highlights. But for the other parts here where we can see those pillars, for example, those are not scratched or those don't appear to be heavily scratched. So the material itself still looks very smooth. It only has these kind of micro scratches around the highlights. So as you saw, this effect is not so easy to set up and also not so easy to render. It takes quite a lot of render time. For some materials, I would say it's worth it. For others, maybe not. So you would need to choose in which kind of situations you think it makes sense to add this kind of effect. But once you do add it, it can add actually quite a lot of realism to your shaders. So now going back to our original picture, the setup here is exactly the same like what you just saw. The only difference is that I added this kind of layer here for the flakes. So I have these kind of colorful flakes that appear in the highlight parts as well. And then other than that, everything is rendered at a much higher resolution to preserve way more of the detail. So that's basically the whole setup for this one. And that concludes also our tutorial. If you like this content, subscribe to this channel. If you wanna check out those scenes here by yourself and watch some additional bonus videos about many of my tutorials, you can check out my Patreon if that has any additional value for you. And other than that, I can just say, take care and see you in the next tutorial.